So today I have a hot spring tub and this thing has a couple of Aquaflow Wavemaster uh, pumps in it. Now these are Aquaflow. You're going to see the Wavemaster brand or the Wavemaster name with, I've seen it with three different brands of pumps and you can see that it's clearly right here got some build up and that kind of stuff. Um, it's not a leak, so to speak, but it is a, a situation. So I'm going to remove the pump, which there's a lot of stuff here in the way. Uh, basically on this, it looks like there's two, there's two bolts here. Of course, somebody's replaced this. They've broken that before. So you've got that, that pump union right here on the suction side. You got this one on the pressure side. And then you've got to deal with this little crazy doolally that they have in the back trying to pull heat off to put in the cabinet. And I'm never able to get that off without cutting the pull tie and putting it back on or either using a flat screwdriver. But both of these pumps have this same buildup. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the seals in them. Stay tuned. All right. So what I'm going to do first is pull the face off here. This should be quick and simple. This thing doesn't look too bad, so I think it's going to be relatively simple to, to get the um, impeller off, replace the seal, and just stick it right back together. This got caught before it got too bad. Which is an important if you let it go too long, it destroys the, the shaft of the motor, and then you got a different, a whole different repair. And luckily, these come apart pretty easy too. These aquaflows. And this particular one, there's a couple of different versions of the aquaflow. This particular one, the seal is here. You can see it actually stayed. It's in a groove right there. There's another style where there's a groove here and the seal is in the groove there. Also on this particular uh, Watkins product, you can see it's got the smaller bleeder on it that screws in. It's got the little tiny nipple on it. Right, so we're going to see if I can put something in here to hold the shaft. I'm going to try to put like a, a small vice grips in there and then I can grab this and you can see that it's got a wear ring on it. This should be a two and an eighth. Um, this is an XP2. So stay tuned. I'm going to get my, my tools and we'll see if we can slip her apart. So this thing's got a pretty good size gap in here behind the impeller. So I should be able to use larger vice grips like this right here. So I'm going to get those in there and crimp them. impeller off with my hand. I don't think I'm going to be able to. So my oil filter pliers just open them up to the widest setting. And it's one of those things where if you can get it to break loose that first little bit of a turn, which it just did, you can turn it right off usually. Now if you wait until the shaft's blown up and everything is, is destroyed, that's a horse of a different color. And you can see that this is still in good shape. So I'm going to be able to pull that off, stick a new one on, reuse the impeller, clean the shaft up. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull the um, wet end off so I can clean the shaft, clean the back of the wet end, and I'll show you how to do all that stuff. Stay tuned. All right, so now I'm going to remove this, and there's actually a quarter-inch screw right there that you have to remove to take that part of the uh, housing off right here first, and then you can take the through bolts out. And I normally wouldn't flip the pump up like this, but uh, I've got to get this, this little doolala here out of the way, which is a hot spring only or Watkins only device. You don't really see those in other brands. So now I'm going to loosen my through bolts. 
this quarter inch if it's a 48 frame and my quarter inch bit is too big for that one bolt naturally. Love that kind of stuff. We got a nice thick quarter bit right there. And it's too thick to go on that. So I'm gonna have to get another one. All right, so I have the through bolts out. Now I'm gonna pull the shaft, uh, pull the wet end off, and you can see that it just had all this buildup. And the shaft is actually in decent shape. You can see it's not too bad at all. It does have a little bit of damage right there, so we're gonna fix that. And the way we're gonna do it is two nuts. I keep them so I can reuse them. And you just take two through bolts Hold it in place with the through bolts. Just like that right there. And you power the pump back up. And there's several different ways that you can power the pump up. And we'll I'll show you a quick one. Stay tuned. Alright, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this back plate loose. Same thing, quarter inch if it's a 48 frame. And I have this made up, and you can make one of these with your cord just as easy as I can. And what I have is it's just a 115 plug and then two spade connectors. You really don't even need ground because this is just a temporary hookup. So all I'm gonna do in this case is remove the two wires. This is a a one-speed pump, so it makes it makes it simple. And this is a 230 volt pump, but uh, you can run it temporarily long enough to do this part of it, um, even at 115 volts, and it's fine. What I'm gonna do is pull that out, make sure there's nothing in the way. And if you get lost on your diagram. There's a wiring diagram. Well, this one. Yeah, the wiring diagram is there. There's a wiring diagram right there on the label on the bottom edge. So what we're going to do now is take the pump and plug it in. Make sure nothing's touching. And we're just going to simply... So the pump fires up and runs. <clears throat> so safety glasses on. The first thing I'm going to do is take something that's hard and tempered like this pair of pliers and just touch it and run it down. And it'll break anything that's heavy, loose. That's the first thing. You see, that actually cleaned the shaft up pretty good. But I'm also going to take a, a, a brush and just kind of brush it and clean it up. And lastly, I'm going to take my file and just run it over just to be on the safe side, make sure it's good and flat. You see that makes it look beautiful. So unplug it. And the next thing is you want to be able to, in a, when you know this thing is right is when you can take the, the impeller and just thread it up without it being in a bind. So you use a flat screwdriver on the back of the shaft. You put this on the front of the shaft and you can see that it's just threading up very easy. If it threads up that easy and you see it bottomed out, that's the spot. That is perfect. Can't get any better than that. So now I'm going to stop the camera for a moment. I'm going to put my electrical back together back here and get all this situated. Clean my wet end up and I'll show you putting the seal in, but we're going to clean all this up. Because you don't want to leave this. This will damage uh, future pieces. So we're trying to, to get the corrosion away from the tub. Stay tuned. All right, so what we're going to do first is knock the old seal out. I've cleaned all that up. See, 
basically all you do is just simply just knock it out. There's the old seal. And on this, on this particular style, on the Aquaflow, the ceramic part actually goes in the volu, which is this back part. So I'm going to take a rag and wipe this out so you can see that it's kind of wet. And a little bit of trash, just clean it up, get it dry. And then to install the other piece, the ceramic piece, the new piece, is very simple. And this particular seal comes with a install tool. If you choose the, the one with the install tool, you can see what that looks like. So all I'm going to do is take the seal, the ceramic part, put my finger through it, try to not get silicone and get your, your hands on the top of it or anything like that. I'm going to take this and put just a little bit of silicone around it, not much. Smooth it. And you drop it into the, the bow loot. I'm going to reposition the camera so you can see this. So I've just slipped it down in there. I'm going to take my seal tool and simply just press it down in there. Put a little pressure on it, make sure it is flat. You can see that that's pretty flat looking from the back. You can see that it is up against the, the housing. Now the next part is putting the other part of the seal on this shaft. So what you do here, now this is opposite on some other brands from the way that I'm showing you this. This is correct on this brand. Let's put a little bit of Scylla juice on the shaft right there and take the new seal and you can see that this seal has two indentions in it if you're not real careful you'll get those indentions out of alignment with this and if you put it together like that with them out of alignment it will actually break the seal face when you compress it so all you do is just twist it and when it hits that silicone it'll slide right down and you just want it to bottom out just like that right there now I'm gonna put the pump back together as far as I'm gonna take the um, through bolts nuts back out I'm gonna take the um, I'm gonna put the wet end back in place and we'll go from there stay tuned So now you will hold the back of the pump with the flat screwdriver. You will hold the impeller in your left hand and just simply spin it on. And you're looking for it to compress <clears throat> down in there. Let me see what the shot looks like. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. You'll see that, that right there. When it's right, you'll see the shaft, and it'll actually have a little stopping point right there, so it compressed right. That is what it should look like right there. Then you will put your wear ring back on. Do not forget the wear ring. And this wear ring goes with that part out like that. And the other thing is, is before you pull this part, always make sure you know the direction. These on this particular machine are both in the 12 o'clock position, but this can be turned here or here. Make sure you put it back on like you took it off. Make sure that the seal here is back in the right place and not twisted. And so I'm going to look at this for just a second before I put it back together. Stay tuned. So in this particular case, this is the old style that's not in the groove. And you want that. They're actually almost a square. It's not really an O-ring. It's almost flat. you got to get it in the right position. And the other thing that I'm going to do is put just a little bit of silicone around. Not a lot. Just to give it a little bit of extra degree. Because these things, sometimes this particular brand will drip. That's why they change the the design of it, put it in the groove, so it made it a more uh, complete seal than this style. And then you look for that right there, and that goes up, so it will fit back in there just like that. 
and then you put your your screws back in. And the way I do it's just like you're tightening the head on a 350 Chevy. You run them up. Sure, a little bit slowly. Tighten any of them yet. And if you have an M, uh, uh, a drill that you can control the pressure, I'll turn it on about ten right there, and then just in a cross pattern. Some of them I'll do eight. Just depends on how it feels. So that is a completed repair right there. And you can do that at home just as easily as I can do it. So now that I've got this one finished, I've got to pull that one out. And I'll zoom in. If you look, that one is just as corroded there she is. See that corrosion right there? It's just as corroded there. So we're going to do the exact same repair on that one. And that's chemical buildup and that kind of stuff. And this is a pre-owned tub that I'm going to sell. So those kinds of things I try to go ahead and fix so we don't have issues in the field. So I will show you this repair completed in just a little bit. Stay tuned. So friends, we've got the new seals all in. Everything is all buttoned up and you see no leaks nice and dry everywhere so let's look at our work she is rock and rolling my friends just that easy to replace the seals to make it look back like it did done deal i don't know much but i do know hot tubs Make sure you go to the website right now, hottubpartsofamerica.com. If you need any parts, I don't carry proprietary parts for hot spring uh, Watkins tubs, but I do carry seal parts and things like that. And just remember, if you've got a Wave Master, that particular pump uh, can be found in three different varieties. So you can't just order parts for it. You gotta figure out what you got. You can send us photographs, our email is parts at the abbreviation for the website, HTP of A, Hot Tub Parts of America, HTPOFA.com. Parts at HTPOFA.com. I'll identify the pump and try to send you links back to what the actual part is. Thank you so much for watching. Go there right now.